Hello, it's me, Ashley Marie, and welcome back to Ashley Marie and the Freshman 15. I had to do that, I couldn't resist. In today's edition of Ashley Marie and the Freshman 15, it's going to be all about 10 things that I learned from doing theater. I was just recently in a production of West Side Story at my college, and it was the most awesome experience ever. I had the best time, did it with the best people. It's my dream show to be in. It's any dancer's dream show to be in. I decided that I wanted this video to be a culmination of some of the biggest lessons that I've learned from theater and how they've influenced my life and hopefully they can influence yours. So without further ado, let's get started. So I was put my senior year of high school in a role that really challenged me. Um, I ended up being Mrs. Mears in Thoroughly Modern Millie. I was going for anyone but that role. And if you're not familiar with the show, Mrs. Mears is the antagonist of the show. She sings very low alto. She is conniving and pretends to be Chinese so that she can sell girls into white slavery. Like, how much worse than that can you get? I can tell you that I grew so much as an actress, as a singer. I didn't think I could do it. And I was so nervous. I was so nervous all the time during rehearsals and during performances because I was like, I'm gonna mess this up and I can't do it. By the end, we were, we were rocking and rolling with it. And it was honestly one of the best roles that I've ever done because I, I just got to be so over the top and comedic and it was really great. In just about every art, you're going to hear no a lot more than you're going to hear yes. And the thing is, is that you can't let it defeat you. I, I can honestly say I've been rejected so many times and I didn't get parts I wanted because I just wasn't right for it. But it didn't stop me from doing theater just because I didn't get a part. Directors are always different and they'll put you where they think you fit best. And it's just one of those natural things in life is that you're not going to get picked for everything, but you can't let it, you can't let it stop you from doing, from doing what you love if you love it that much. Sometimes you're going to forget the words in an audition. Sometimes you're not going to get the triple turn that you want, or you're not going to land a double tour, or you're not going to... You're not gonna sing that note perfectly on pitch. You know, it's okay. It is okay. Because once again, you can't let it defeat you. Because everybody messes up. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. Oh, yeah. My fourth grade teacher used to have this sign in her classroom and it was like, Poe Buddy's Nerfect. You're right, Poe Buddy's Nerfect. Poe Buddy's Nerfect. Nobody's When you're in theater, no two rehearsals are ever going to be the same. Even if you're covering the same material, it's never going to feel the same or look the same or sound the same. It's never going to be the same. People might be in different moods or they might be feeling sick or whatever, and it influences their performance. And sometimes you think about it and somebody will say a line a different way and you react a different way. I love doing live theater because it keeps the it keeps the spontaneity like you're saying it for the first time. How you doing? This one's huge. This one is huge because just like nobody's perfect, no two people are the same. So you can't constantly compare yourself to someone even if you always go for the same roles as them. So like even if you always go for the funny alto or the ingenue, your strengths might be different than the girl next to you. And I know this especially because I tend to compare myself a lot to other people that are in my same voice part or dance like me or act in the same roles as I do. That's one of the most toxic things that you can do. So I've just learned not to because everybody's different and 
Everybody is special in their own way. Everybody! Everyone's a hero in their own way. I like this one. I really like this one because I think that you are your biggest competition and your own worst enemy. It's no surprise to me, I am my own worst enemy. And if you keep beating yourself down and saying that, no, I can't do it because so-and-so could do it better than me or whatever, you have to push back. You have to push against that, fight against that instinct. Take it and just throw it out the window. Maybe you're not having the best day, but that is okay. You just have to, you just have to tell yourself that I'm just going to practice that a little bit more and I'm going to do it better the next time. If I gave 100% today, I'm going to give 110 tomorrow. The seventh thing. Theater kids randomly bursting into song. Don't say that one every day. I mean this completely seriously. That you might have to be patient waiting for castless. Because all through high school, I did. I waited for about two and a half weeks. Every time there was a musical and it was the most stressful thing ever. Because I would literally go online and refresh the page with the cast list on it. And I'd just be like, did she post it yet? Did she post it yet? Did she post it yet? And of course, no, not until like two and a half weeks later. Like the day before the read through, like pfft. Thanks. But you also have to be patient in the fact that you might not get your big role or your big break as soon as you do theater. So you might have to do a lot of waiting before there's an opportunity right there. And when there is, you go and grab it. Just, it's yours. I see this a lot with a lot of my theater friends that they think that, oh, well, this is the best that I'm going to get. They got their big role, they got their dream role that they wanted, and that's the best that they're going to get. So they're done. But no, you're not done. You're not done because, like, you can't, you can't have just peaked at 17. If you want to keep doing this and you love theater that much, then you have to keep growing and keep allowing yourself to grow. Get in some voice lessons, take some dance classes, get an acting coach. You know, whatever it is that you need to keep working on, keep working on it. Because there could be role after role coming for you. You might not get that role that you've been waiting for and said, oh, well, when I'm 40, I want to play such and such. You might not get it if you allow yourself to stop growing and just sit back on your haunches. By thanking everyone, I'm completely serious about this because it's not just thanking your castmates for an awesome show or your director for all that they taught you. It's about everyone that you don't see doing all the work. You know, thank your stage manager for keeping everyone in check. Thank your backstage crew for getting those sets on on time so that you could go out and put on an awesome show. Thank your prop manager for keeping all your props on the prop table. Thank your music director for teaching you the songs in the musical, or keeping the orchestra playing as best they can. You know, thank everyone, because everyone is important. There's no unimportant part in any production. When you're up on that stage, just think about that this is the best time. This is the best time of your life. And you don't want to regret anything. You don't want to regret anything at the end of the show. So you want to just leave it all out on the stage and do it to the best of your ability. Even if you're just that guy who makes a cross in the opening number and waves across the stage at the newspaper man, you should still enjoy that. Everybody has a special part in the show, no matter if they're the lead or in the ensemble. It doesn't matter. You just need to enjoy it and embrace it because it's theater. It's theater, man. 
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys coming back to my channel and continuously watching my videos. And I hope to make more for you guys. And I will see you guys next time on the next edition of Ashley Marie and the Freshman 15. Bye.